one. They packed us into train cars like cattle. Worse than cattle. They fed us potato skins. They fed us nothing. Their boots entered our doorways at night. We have nightmares of showers we never return from. Babies held to their mother's breasts so they will not inhale the gas. Babies exterminated. And we said, never again will God's people, the Jews, be treated this way. Two, in Jerusalem, I saw girls and boys, children in uniform, with rifles on their backs and slushies in their hands. I saw my grandma cling to the wailing wall like she might cling to a son just returned from war. In a museum, a timeline listed the points when blood had run in the streets of this city as it changed hands from one God's people to the next. The idea of these massacres in the place where I stood sickened me and I thought, I do not love this land. This is a place of death without renewal and God exists everywhere, so why would I ever choose to seek the sacred in this place of trauma? Three, I am sitting in a tiny apartment full of young Jews crammed around mismatched tables. We are here to celebrate the liberation from slavery in Egypt and so many other liberations, an orange on the Seder plate for queers in our community, an olive for Palestine. Vince invites us to interrupt with questions during the Haggadah reading. As a child, I memorized the four questions asked by the youngest person at the table. Until now, those were the only questions I had been invited to ask during the Seder. Four, when I told my grandma I was organizing with radical Jews in support of Palestinian rights, she said almost nothing. Five, Zionists invaded Palestine. Palestine was invaded by Zionists. Palestine was invaded. Palestinians are refugees. Palestinians are terrorists. Palestinians are violent fanatics who thirst for the blood of Jewish babies. Or was it Jews who thirst for the blood of Christian babies? Or did anyone remember that neither Jews nor Muslims consume blood? Six. When my grandma finally decided to talk to me about the differences in our views, I told her about the girl who grew up in my community, graduated from my school, stood in front of a Palestinian home to prevent its demolition, was crushed to death by an Israeli bulldozer. My grandma said that girl should not have been standing there. My grandma said she must have been stupid. And when my grandma finally decided to talk to me, she did not decide to listen. Seven, when the new Haggadah in the tiny apartment asks, in what ways have you personally been liberated this year? I imagine the binds of destructive stories being broken, stories based on fear whose morals are hatred and aggression. Eight, Babi and Zaidi, Sava and Safta, grandmothers and grandfathers teach us that our suffering was a gift from God for only through that suffering could we truly understand the suffering of others. God chose us so that we might know what it is to be the other in our own homes. Bubby, teach me that the appropriate response to Weltschmerz is to Kun Olam, that the best way to honor those who suffered and died because of other people's fear and hatred and confusion and prejudice is to teach people not to act out of fear, hatred, confusion, and prejudice, but out of love. Be sure I understand that the trauma of Kristallnacht and Al Nakba is the same. Be sure I understand that there is no never again without never again for anyone.